The Hittites and the Old Testament by Frederick Fivey Bruce Chapter 5 V. The Biblical Data Examined When we find biblical references to the Hittite occupation of a considerable extent of territory north of Canaan, as in the passage already quoted from Josh I of 4, we have a usage very similar to the Assyrian one. From the wilderness and this Lebanon even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites would cover very well the territory which the Assyrians designated the land of the Qadi. The day has long since gone by when a scholar should express surprise at the mention of the kings of the Hittites in 2 Kings 7. 6 rather than of the king of Judah, the real and near ally.21. But it is obvious now that if Jehoram had indeed enlisted the aid of the Hittite kings, as the panic-stricken Syrians imagined, they might well flee. In point of fact, the Hittite states were at that time allied with the Damascene kingdom by reason of the Assyrian threat to both alike, so that the securing of their aid by Jehoram against Ben-Hadad was highly unlikely, but men in a panic will believe anything. But what of the Hittites who are enumerated as one of the peoples of Canaan? They appear in four parts of the land, one, at Hebron, where they formed the dominant population, the Amhiaris, in the time of Abraham, who was a resident alien among them, Gen 23, 2, at Beersheba or thereabout in the time of Isaac, whose son Esau marries daughters of hate, Gen 26. 34, 3, possibly at Bethel, if this is a proper inference from the fact that the quizzling Bethelite made his way to the land of the Hittites, Judges I, 26, 4, at Jerusalem, to which Ezekiel, as we have seen, ascribes a mixed Hittite and Amorite foundation. To these indications we may add the statement in number 13. 29 that the Hittites were one of the peoples occupying the central mountain ridge of Canaan. And we may note the interesting fact that as late as 711 BC an inscription of Sargon II records a revolt against the Assyrians by the Qadi of Ashdod, for the occasion CFISA XX. 1. One thing is certain, at no time known to us did the Hittite Empire itself extend into Canaan, much less as far south as Judah. The Canaanite Hittites are not so called because they belonged either to that empire or to the Hittite states which succeeded it. The use of the word Qadi with reference to the population of Ashdod may simply be the result of the loose Assyrian fashion of denoting Syria in general as the land of the Qadi, though this is not the only possible explanation. But the biblical references to the Hittites as one among several peoples of Canaan can hardly be set down as imitation of Assyrian usage. The narrative of Abraham's purchase of the cave of Machpelah in Gen 23 is by the Wellhausenist analysis ascribed to the post-exilic priestly code, though the ascription has been questioned. We do not discuss this matter here, but it is to be emphasized that, whatever date be given to the narrative in its final form, its essential antiquity and accuracy must be acknowledged. The story, says S.H. Hook, has every appearance of being an ancient tradition. The details of the sale conform accurately to the technical style of the numerous Babylonian and Assyrian contract tablets which have been discovered in the course of excavating many Mesopotamian city sites. The purchase price is weighed, as was customary at a time when coinage had not yet made its appearance. 22. Professor Hook goes on to say, however, the principal historical difficulty is the mention of Hittites as occupying Hebron in the time of Abraham. 23 He suggests that we have here an anachronism, the writer having projected into the past the conditions of a later time. Now, there is nothing to be surprised at in this suggestion, a writer of the present day might similarly say that the Scots opposed Agricola's advance in North Britain in AD 84, overlooking for the moment the fact that there were no Scots in those parts until the 5th century. Emil Farr added another argument in two articles on the Hittites in Palestine which appeared in the Palestine Exploration Fund quarterly statement for 1936 and 1937. He connected the presence of Hittites in Palestine with a passage in an inscription of Merciless II in 1331 BC which implies that about 20 years previously certain rebel subjects of the Hittite king escaped as fugitives to Egyptian territory and were allowed by the Egyptians to settle in part of the Egyptian empire, according to Far, in the sparsely populated hill country of Judah. However this might be, if these were the first Hittites in Palestine, the placing of them there in Abraham's day remains an anachronism. But there is more to say. A further suggestion is that Hittites is a general term by which the Old Testament writers denoted the non-Semitic populations of Canaan, 
and that the Canaanite Hittites are really the people whom we now call Hurrians. Point 20 For the Hurrians who, as we have seen, entered Upper Mesopotamia from the north about the same time as the Indo-European Hittites came into Asia Minor, spread farther westward, and so many of them entered Canaan that one of the Egyptian words for Canaan was Kuru, Hurrian. Land. That there were Hurrians in Canaan in Abraham's time is certain. And if we could take Ezekiel's account of the origin of Jerusalem to mean that it was a joint Amorite and Hurrian foundation, we should immediately have an illuminating commentary on the name of Pudi Kepa, governor of the city in the Amarna age, whose name means servant of the Hurrian, goddess Kepa, 25. But on the other hand we must remember the possibility, to put it no higher, that another native of Canaanite Jerusalem, Arana the Jebusite, perhaps the Jebusite king who accepted David's overlordship. 26 has a name which can plausibly be identified with Hittite Arawanis, Freeman, Noble, the only Old Testament character for whose name a Hittite etymology can be offered that is anything like convincing.27. It is no doubt owing to the presence in Canaan of the Hurrians, whose ruling stock was of Aryan linguistic origin, that we find Aryan names in Canaan round about this time, similar to those which appear in the list of kings of Mitanni and of the Kassite kings of Babylonia. Point 28 The theory which finds in these Hurrians the solution of the problem of the Canaanite Hittites is very attractive, and some place must in any case be allowed to the possibility of confusion in the record between Hittites and Hurrians. The Hivites of the Old Testament were either Hurrians pure and simple, or else a particular branch of the Hurrians. Point 29 now, in Gen 26. 34. Elon, one of Esau's fathers in law, who is called a Hittite in the Masoretic Hebrew, appears as a Hivite in the LXX and Samaritan texts. Contrarywise, the Hivite under Hermon in Josh 11. 3 appears in the LXX as the Hittites, Toamikron Upsilon K Upsilon Omicron Upsilon. But despite some confusion of the two peoples in the textual tradition, the Hittites and the Hivites are regularly differentiated in the list of the peoples of Canaan, X3. 8 and some 16 other places. The fact is, that when the Hurrians came into Palestine, they were not unaccompanied by other northerners. The migration of both Hurrians and Hittites into Canaan was part of a wide movement, and is to be connected with the southward advance of the Hyksos, the rulers of foreign lands, as the Egyptians called them. These Hyksos and their followers, before invading Egypt about 1720 BC, established their supremacy in Canaan, a supremacy which has left archaeological traces in the distinctive enclosure with rampart fortifications of Terra PC which the Hebrews called Hazarim, Deuteronomy 2. 23.30 the Hyksos princes were mostly of Semitic origin, if we may judge by their names, example, their leader in the invasion of Egypt bore, according to Mando, the name Salatis, a Semitic word meaning ruler, cognate with sultan. Yet some of them, like Kayan, had decidedly non-Semitic names. 31 and their followers were a mixed multitude, including Hittites, probably both Proto-Hittites and Indo-European Hittites, Luwians, Hurrians, and Aryans, as well as Semites, 32 and in this mixed multitude the roving bands known as Kabiru were no doubt also represented. Abraham's date may be inferred by comparing Gen 13. 18 and 23. 2FF with number 13. 22. According to the last passage, Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt, and according to the Genesis passages, Hebron existed in Abraham's time. The foundation of Zoan, i.e. Tanis or Avarice, referred to in number 13. 22 is doubtless its foundation by the Hyksos about 1720 B.C. 33 a date towards the end of the 18th century BC for Abraham's arrival in Canaan is therefore indicated, and in view of what has just been said, the presence of Hittites in South Canaan at that time cannot be called an anachronism. 21 Quoted by Sace, The Hittites, 4th edition, 1925, page 11. 22 In the beginning, Clarendon Bible 6. 1947, pages 92f. 23 Upset, page 93. 24 A. Spicer, Mesopotamian Origins, 1930, Pages 134F, J. Patterson, in Studia Semitica et Orientalia 2. Glasgow, 1945, page 101. 25 The Semitic names given to early rulers of Jerusalem, Melchizedek, Gen 14. 18, and Adonisdek, Josh X. 1, would derive from the Amorite element in the city's population. 26 His name is variously given as Awarna, Arana, and Aranya in 2 Sam, 24. 
16 ff, and his glossed Hamlelech, the king, in Ver. 23. 27 Sace attempted to find a Hittite etymology for Ephron in Gen 23. JTS. 29, 1928, page 405, and suggested that it was equivalent to Hittite Kippras, which he rendered freeholder. Ephron, the freeholder, was thus absolute master of the property which he sold to Abraham. But Sturtevant's Hittite glossary, page 50, gives Kippuras the meaning captive. Ephron's father Zohar, says thought, bore a name equivalent to Zukaru of the Assyro-Cappadocian tablets, a word denoting the boy or agent of the Assyrian merchants. This may be ignored, but his further remark is noteworthy that the biblical writer in Gen 23. 16f repeats the technical language of the contract tables found at Kultip and Kirkuk. 28 In Syria and Palestine we find such Aryan names as Shawardita, Artemania, Shabandu, Piridashwa, Indaruta. 29 Possible is also the assumption of a Horite subdivision known as the Hiwites, whose name supplanted the more general designation, Horites, on account of complications arising through popular etymology, E. S. Beiser, Ethnic Movements, 1933. Page 30. 30e, A. Spicer concludes that the Avim who dwelt in enclosures, Hayes, Rim, Deuteronomy 2. 23, represented a Hyksos group, Ethnic Movements, page 31. 31 Spicer, Ethnic Movements, page 48. 32 Spicer, Ethnic Movements, pages 34, 51, T.J. Meek, Hebrew Origins, 1936, page 5, J. Affinigan, Light from the Ancient Past, 1946, page 125. 33 W. F. Albright discussed the date of Abraham in the Journal of the Society of Oriental Research X, 1926, pages 231 to 69. An earlier date might be suggested if we accept the attractive identification of the campaign of Gen 14 with the destruction of the Bronze Age civilization of Transjordan dated by Nelson Gluek around 1900 BC, but an accommodation between the two datings may yet be reached.